Welcome to the fourth and final NCAA Video Bulletin of the 2015 baseball season. The first item I'd like to talk about this week is Appendix E in the rulebook regarding getting the call right. A lot of emphasis has been put on the reversing of a catch-no-catch -no -catch in the outfield and the predetermined base awards that go with that. Overall, that's been going very well this season. It does seem, however, that a few points in the rule regarding a few other types of situations does need some discussion. Remember, with two outs, any catch, no catch, anywhere on the field, including the infield, can be changed from an initial call of no catch to a catch because the placement of the runners is also predetermined. With two outs, a no catch changed to a catch results in the batter being called out and the inning is over. Additionally, with no runners on base, a catch, no catch can always be changed to a catch anywhere on the field, including the infield, because the batter will simply be called out. Let's now take a look at a couple different force play situations. Here's a situation where runners are on first and second and a force play is at third base. First, let's talk about the positioning. Not the ideal positioning to be in here. We'd like to see you take two or three steps into foul territory so you can have a better angle of seeing this tag applied. Also, by being in foul territory, you'll be able to see this. That runner is not allowed to slide to the same side of the bag as the fielder who's taking the play. A lot of times we think these force play slide violations only are at second base, but they're really at all bases when there's a force in play, no matter how many outs. So again, on this type of play, we'd like to see you step into foul territory, try to get towards that coach's box. Be aware that the bunt is in order. Think ahead about where your positioning is going to be. By being out in foul territory, you'd be able to see the tag applied to the inside of the body, the side of the body closest to home plate if it's a high tag. And also, you'll be in excellent position to rule on the force play slide violation. Our final clip this week is another force play slide at second base. Let's take a look. You'll notice here that the runner slides directly into the base and pops up directly on top of the base. This is not a force play slide violation. This runner is entitled to slide directly into the base and immediately pop up directly on top of the base. It looks like in this clip here that the fielder got himself a little off balance and came, tried to come over the top of the base. This is a legal slide. The only way that this could be a force play slide violation is when this runner is popping up if you think he intentionally went into the fielder and tried to knock him down or intentionally try to make contact or alter the play. Secretary Rules Editor has viewed this clip and said it's a legal slide. The runner has popped up directly on top of the base and this fielder got himself off balance here trying to make a throw but unfortunately the runner did nothing wrong here. A good no call here by the second base umpire. We'll watch it one more time. We'll watch this final angle right here. A good no call by this official. Thank you for viewing the fourth and final NCA video bulletin of the 2015 season. It's conference tournament time, and then we're off to the postseason. I hope everybody has a great final ending to their 2015 baseball season. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me at the information on the screen. Thank you.